Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa aftulu salatu wa tamu taslim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in wa radi Allah ta'ala ana sadida tabi'in wa ulama al-amaleen wa a'imatul arabatul mujtahideen wa muqalidihim ila yawmideen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, very excited to be joining you all today uh, You're listening to Nuru Zaman Radio this is our weekly show called Half Your Dean Radio. This title, Half Your Dean Radio, or excuse me, Half Your Dean Show, is based upon a well-known hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, whoever Allah blesses with a righteous wife has completed half or part of his deen, so let him fear Allah for the remaining, remaining, remaining part or half. Well, alhamdulillah. We're broadcasting live, actually, from Masjid al Mukmin in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And my name is Imam Naeem Abdullah, and this is my co-host and my beautiful, beloved wife, Samira Um Saeed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam to lebi katu. Wa alaikum salam to lebi katu. Everyone, just giving the greetings, Fatima, Carlos, I think. Nimco, Alhamdulillah, thank you for joining and everyone else, thank you for joining the Half Your Dean Show, Alhamdulillah, we're back again, live in effect, live and direct, live in effect, I L said effect, live and direct, why it gotta be effect, how come it can't be direct? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Hold on, let me see here. Let me put some announcements on. You're just gonna just just be quiet, right? You had the floor that you just gonna. <laughs> well, I'm sure. sorry, y'all. I can't do two things at one time. <laughs> yes, you can. You can do it. <laughs> I'm there. I just wanted to make an announcement on our page, Happy Bean Show page. We came on approximately 10 minutes late. My, that was her, her fault. <laughs> no, it was, fault. It wasn't my fault. No, my fault. It wasn't anyone's fault no. because the time for Salatul Maghrib is coming closer and closer to 8.30. So by the time we finish praying and I come upstairs and, you know, it's already kind of close and... All that kind of stuff. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we have about a month left before we get to Ramadan. Hmm. A month and some change. Oh, I was just texting you, Hen. Salam alaikum. <laughs> we got a month and some change before we get to Ramadan. Right. What I'm thinking is that we should, next week, hmm. Change the show time to either eight forty five or nine o'clock. So you wanna push it back some? Some more, yes. Mm -hmm. And then during the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that we should move the show way early. Mm -hmm. Sometime like after Dhuha or something like that, or even before Dhuha. Because you know with the you know, the iftar the you know the the taught away and everything. We're not doing no radio show at night. No. No. I gotta get my eat on. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not what Ramadan's about, but I'll be concentrating on eating. Yeah. And most of us will be in the massage. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trying to take nobody away from taught away just to listen to us. Oh, I gotta do something real quick. Listen to us talk about, you know, marital issues. Even though it's beneficial and all of these things. Uh we believe that the Salatul Tarawih, the night prayers that we make during the month of Ramadan, is more important. So even if we do these these uh, shows, 
during the daytime and let's say many of you are working and can't listen you know you can always go to Mixler MixLR or you can go to YouTube or even you know the Facebook pages that we post these shows to and listen to it later so even if people aren't listening live they still can listen a little bit later inshallah because one thing I don't want to do I don't want to stop the show right because I know how we do mm-hmm. we'll stop the show for Ramadan and we won't start up until about another three four months after Ramadan yes <laughs> It's a bad habit. Mm-hmm. Allah loves consistency. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a little bit, whatever it is that you're going to do, whatever that you intend on doing, you need to be consistent and continue doing it until you leave this earth, your last breath. Right. Um, let me call out the call in numbers. It's 412 467 3030. Again, 412 567 3030 and you can call in with your comment or question we will not call out your telephone number inshallah um alhamdulillah i noticed this show and when we was on blog talk blog talk is is telephone based Mm -hmm. so we you know we get generally get a decent amount of callers Mm -hmm. but we haven't really been emphasizing our phone numbers as much as much because we don't really want people to think they can call in to listen. Right. A lot of some people mm-hmm. think that in order because we we been we spent so many years on blog talk that in order to listen to the show that you have to call in. Right. It's not the case as you all already know. Mm-hmm. But you can call in if you don't if you do want to come on air. You have a comment. You have some questions or something like that. You can come on air. So. Alhamdulillah. And the number once again is four one two five six seven thirty thirty. So if anybody wants to call in, you know, feel free. Alhamdulillah. Um, before we get into the topic for the evening, I want to let y'all know I finally got to see the movie Get Out last night. <laughs> was it last night? Yeah. It was last night. I actually seen two movies last night I finally got to see. And I don't go to the movie theaters. Um, I wait till I can see it otherwise. <laughs> but um, I do go to the movie theaters. It's got to be a special occasion for that. But anyway, that's besides the point. I finally got to see Get Out. I want to know what the big deal about this movie. And for me, it was one of those eye openers. I'm surprised that Hollywood allowed that movie to <laughs> be screened without any scrutiny because you know the other movie i seen was born of a nation and we know birth of a nation birth of a nation what i say born of a nation birth of a nation I, I apologize mr nate parker um i got to see that last night as well um two distinguished movies that i recommend everyone to see um, the first one, the Get Out uh, movie, it had a lot of symbolism, and I didn't really recognize it until after I seen a uh, commentary on it. I'm not going to say who gave the commentary, but they gave a commentary on it, and it just opened up my eyes to a lot of things in the movie. And when I think back, I'm going to go, I'm going to look at it again. I'm like, subhanAllah, because I don't want to start nothing, because... When you say things, certain things, uh, people take it, and when they don't understand where you're coming from, then they'll take it a whole different level. You look look at it for yourself um, and see what you get out of it. Um, it was clear to me what the message that it was, <laughs> was given. Mm-hmm. But for you, it may be something different. But either way, the person, um, I believe, I forgot which one, which, which one of the comedians, Keen, Key or P, uh, Key, what was it? Key or Peel. One of them was the one that, um, directed that movie. Did an excellent job on that. And on the birth of a nation, um, Nate Parker did an excellent, uh, 
um, work on that one as well. It was just interesting. Both movies had some similarities in it, and it just gave me a, a great appreciation of history. Um, Subhanallah. So I don't want to give it up. If you hadn't seen it already, I um, recommend that you look at it um, and see what lessons you learn from it. Mashallah. I haven't seen Birth of a Nation yet. I plan on seeing it. Did you know that that's not the first movie named Birth of, Na Birth of a Nation? No, when I looked it up, I saw several titles of the same name. Well, there was another big movie. I forgot what year it came out, but like way long time ago. Mm -hmm. I think it came out during the period of Reconstruction. It's also named Birth of a Nation. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's talking about the Ku Klux Klan and and so, another, so Nate Parker actually named it because of that. Mm. Like, this is the other side of that coin. Oh, subhanAllah. Because it, it, this thing was about, you know, the the, the dean. And I, yes, and unspoken the, message on Get Out, yep. The dean of uh, white supremacy mm -hmm. in Birth of a Nation. Mm -hmm. And I said dean on purpose. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of uh, us don't recognize, when the term white supremacy is being used. Mm -hmm. The one that's using it is not saying that they believe white people are supreme, unless you're a white supremacist. Right. You think you know the white supremacist believes that they're better than other human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, but white supremacy, believe it or not, and maybe we have to do another discussion on that. But it, that's just that's not a term. That's not. That's only consistent with the so-called whole teppers or Afrocentric people with their meta, meta history, their make-believe history, and all that kind of stuff. If you look at what the meaning and reality of white supremacy, and you juxtapose it or look at it critically from an Islamic standpoint, you will see that it's consistent with. Uh, Islam and what Islam has to say about Alamat al Akhir Zaman, the signs of the last days. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's a complete different topic. But that, uh, uh, what was I mentioning there? <laughs> you say you didn't see that. You were going to see it and you was going on to say there was yeah, another yeah, yeah, yeah. title of a uh, 1915 WC Handy. Yeah. I guess that's uh, Rashid. You talking about the original uh, Birth of a Nation? I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Okay. But I want to see both of them. I haven't seen either of them yet. What do you mean you didn't see either of them? I haven't seen the original Birth of a Nation, nor did I see the oh. one that just came out. Oh, okay. Uh, I hope y'all can see us. We kind of. Yeah. Yeah, look kind I of got dark. on. Yeah, I got on all black today, yeah. and our lighting this evening. Yeah, that's what he's talking making, about. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. So, uh, when you examine, uh, for example, when you talk about white supremacy and the so-called supremacy of the white race, race is actually a modern construct. It's not something that that that's old. It's something new, mm -hmm. and it was created just for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, so basically, people that and classify them based on uh, the color wasn't the how can I say it? It didn't like categorize or put you in a certain group because right. you was a certain color. Like right. what we would think white wouldn't be white back in the day, and what we exactly. think black it, it wouldn't be black like black back in the day. Exactly. Around, so. And so, like at some point, and it was a conscious political decision to downplay all of the different tribes that Europeans came from and collectively come together mm -hmm. under the title of white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alhamdulillah. And, mm -hmm. at the, and at the same time, those of African descent, mm -hmm. we even still to this day, obviously not us because the knowledge of our tribes have been taken away for us, from us meaning the Africans that were forcibly put in the diaspora. Uh, we don't know our tribes, but if you look in Africa today or go to Africa, it's very clear that they still think based upon tribe. Right. And and that's for, for, foremost in their mind. Right. 
for us who don't have any tribe or to other people looking at it, looking at them like, what's your truth for? You're all black. <laughs> and they right. may not use the word black. Right. They may use the N word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're all the same to us. <laughs> You're all black, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and this, and this is something that we have, have to look at even deeper because all of our scholars, and particularly I have in my mind, uh, Sultan Muhammad Bello, the son of the Sheikh, sure. Sheikh Uthman Al Fodio, to come the Hula Hubi Rahmati Ami, who mentioned in his book Nasu Kafi mm -hmm. that what brings about uh, 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 progress, advancement, and rectification of your deen and your dunya, mm -hmm. this life as well as the next, mm -hmm. the secular so called and the spiritual so called, is unity. Right, mm -hmm. and the thing that will destroy your dean and your dunya is if if tirak disunity. Right, mm -hmm. so think about this now. The non-believing Europeans came unified themselves by downplaying their individual tribes and coming under coming together under this make-believe imaginary imaginary construct called race, the white race, mm -hmm. and we as Muslims. In the African continent, mm -hmm. even though we're supposed to be united upon Tawheed, which is bigger than any race, right. we still disunited mm -hmm. based upon tribe. Mm -hmm. And if you examine that and then look at the colonial period and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, you see why what happened to us happened to us. And you also see why we still at where we, where at. we at. Where <laughs> you know, because we find reasons to be disunited yeah. mm -hmm. and the enemies of Allah, the shayateen, they're finding reasons to be united. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's a little digression, excuse me. <laughs> yes, brother. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, what's the title for today's show? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> the breakdown of <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> About being a pawn in someone's game. Being a pawn? Porno star? What you say? Pawn. P A W N. Oh, oh. Pawn. Oh, we're not talking about porno star. Not porn. <laughs> pawn. Well, pawn. pawn. <laughs> a pawn. A pawn like a lake? A pawn. I can't say. I'm from New York. I can't pronounce it any way. You ain't been from New York for a long time. A pawn uh -huh. in someone's game. A pawn in someone's game. Yes, a pawn. Yes. What, what what does that mean? Break it down. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you know what? You a mess. Why? Well, this is based on something that you wrote about a year ago, and the basis of it's it. been actually two years. Really? Yeah. So now, um, it's based on something you wrote about. Uh, how we kind of discussed it last week. Last week, we were talking about the scheming of women. Remember, that was our topic last week. Mashallah, if y'all didn't listen, uh, <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Yeah. Um, we was talking about the scheming of women, and we were just talking about, you know, uh, how women be doing stuff. And we used a scenario about the brother, I forgot his name, that was caught up with the Ayub wife. Ayub Abdul Ali. Yeah. He Springfield, caught Massachusetts. Up, uh -huh. Caught up with the wife that was an informant, a paid informant. And she, you know, um, threw him under the bus. But my argument was he walked into that. He should have. She threw him under the bus? Yeah. And then she got in the bus and started driving it too. <laughs> she, she, not only did she throw him under the bus, she drove the bus. And she um, ratted him out and saying he got some some guns somewhere, and yada yada yada. He got caught up um, on that. Um, this week we were t um, somehow we was talking about the porn issue. I forgot where in that. No, nah, you made that title up. No, I'm throwing you under the bus. <laughs> you made that title up. <laughs> No, we were I don't see the... how we got to do anything what we're trying to talk about tonight. I want to see how you're going to make this work. I threw her under the bus, and I'm driving too. I threw her under the bus. She named it that. I gave her the subject matter, and she named it. Now, I want to see you make this work further. Oh, you just gonna put you yeah, just gonna put right. me you yeah. gonna put me out there, right? Yeah, oh, that's how you do me. All right, y'all see you see the uh, this is the real email. Okay, I see I see how it is. Okay. 
Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> What you, what, 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 what? <laughs> you want to sit here and start stuttering? They want to hear. It yes, was, I gave the title, but you got the subject matter. So go ahead. All right. Lead us into it. I'm maybe maybe our, uh, our sharp and intelligent listeners can tell us if this title was appropriate or not. You know what? So I'm What's not so? sharp and intelligent? You trying to say that I'm stupid? No, I'm not saying that. That's what, that's what you're I saying. You're going to drink my water? No, would, you can't have no water. That's what you're trying to say? I Come would, on, if they can decide it. What? Why are you making me laugh? <laughs> I would never say that you were stupid. You, you, didn't have, you didn't have to say it. I would never say it. <laughs> Emphasis on the word say. <laughs> she said, help her brother. No, I'm help him because this is his topic. I think it's actually a good uh, segue. A good way to transition from what we talked about last week to this week. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, I actually don't remember what made me think about it. But I thought about a song that I used to like when it came out. Mm -hmm. And the song is called, I'll Take Your Man. The song was performed by Salt and Pepper. I'm telling y'all my age. The song came out in 1986. Uh, and I examined the lyrics to that song. And then I started thinking <clears throat> about what I've observed and experienced throughout my life, especially with regards to what brothers and sisters go through with polygyny. And I wrote an article. I'm not going to read the article. But I am going to read the lyrics to the song. Then we're going to bring it home, inshallah. Salt and Pepper is back. Maybe you should uh, put the beat on you rhyming. No. <laughs> <laughs> Salt and Pepper is back and we came to outwrap you. So get out my face before I smack you, ho. Don't you know? Can't you understand? If you mess with me, I'll take your man. Right? Pay attention to the lyrics. Now, if you're old enough, we can't help it. The beat is playing in your background. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to say it the way they say it. I'm just going to try to read it. Right? We're not encouraging the listening of the music. Uh, we'll take your man right out the box and put him under my padlock. Well, I'll take your man and right out the box, put him under my padlock, right? Keep up with the beat. Come on. You trying to rush me? No, I'm just saying. So when you see us together, chilling in the place, cold walking and sporting him in your face, go ahead, roll your eyes, suck your teeth, keep huffing and puffing like a dog in heat. You can call me a crook, a robber or a thief, but I'll be your butcher if you got beef. Oh, you know that's old. We don't even talk like that no more. <laughs> yeah. You know what's up? I ain't no poo putt because Pepper kick butts off dumb young bucks like you and the rest of your crew. If mom's one static, I'll diss her too. So scram, you know who I am. Damn chick, don't play me, punk, because I'll take your man. <clears throat> I'll take your man whenever I feel like it. This ain't a threat or a bet. It's a damn promise. You know, I'm reading like that because I'm tempted to rhyme the way it sounds with the <laughs> beat in my head, right? Mm -hmm. For me to you, your sex, life th your sex life's through. If you get another lover, I'll take him too. All I have to do is say a rhyme or two. And he'll hop and leave you like a kangaroo. I'll make him heal for me, st even steal for me. His mother and father, he'd kill for me. Mm. This is some deep, deep lyrics. I, while, I, while I'm reading this, I want y'all to actually think about what you've experienced or have seen in your life. That's what you get for trying to play smart. Now take a hike with that slate up heart. Girl, you don't know if you're coming or going. Look at your face. Your jealousy's growing and showing. 
Don't get mad. You don't have the right. I'll throw Bolo solo, but ladylike on the mic. Psych. I'm looking at the way they uh, mm-hmm. typed it, and they spelled some things wrong right here. Because psych, they put it, they put, they spelled it with the P S Y, like psyche. You know, you know, we say psych. <laughs> you know, you know. But anyway, psych is where I win my battles. I'll handle you like a baby with a rattle. Don't make me prove to you that I can give either give him up or get slammed. I'll take your man. I'll take your man. That's right, but just for spite. Because you tried to diss me when I was on the mic. But I really don't want him. The guy ain't fly. Shoot, he can't even afford to buy a feline suit. Runs the same old gear, never has fresh wear. What he whispered in my ear, I can't repeat here. I don't want to seem to be so damn mean, but you're the hippiest critter I've ever seen. Before I got on the stage, you wished me good luck. Turned around and told your friends I suck. Well, look at you now. You ain't got no body. Searching for a love in a fifth of Bacardi. You look, you, look, you look bad, girl. You look like you're dying. Ain't no use in crying. I'll take your man. Your share, school this fool. I'll take your man. Your fiance. Your husband. You ain't Alice and this ain't Wonderland. And when I say I will, you know I can. Don't mess with me, because I'll take your man. I'll take your man any time at the drop of a dime. Because he's rapping and strapping so hard on mine. Everywhere I turn, everywhere I look. The brother's eyeing me down. He's staring down my throat. I still use that term, now. He's staring down my throat. <laughs> he's looking all down my throat, man. But he's a ducker, sucker, soft-hearted punk, going skiing for skeezers, stunts for blunts. So that's why y'all have so many things in common. Him for just robbing, you for knob slobbing. What's knob slobbing? No, nope, we ain't going to say that, Dale. <laughs> it shows you the different times we live mm-hmm. in, because that was a diss back then. Right. Now it's something you brag about. Right. It's knob slobbing. It's, it's meritorious now. Yeah. <laughs> It went from being Makru to Mustahab. <laughs> uh, uh, I never ever went out my way to get player. Uh, what sounds like. uh, guy, keep guys like yours held down at bay. You know I can. I got the upper hand tramp. You don't stand a chance because I'll take your man. Most girls have guys that's good to go, but yours is slow. He's a freaking a-hole. The fact still stands. There's no change in plans. Your pepper, your wishes, my command. Now you know. You know I'll take your man. Check him out. You see what what I mean? He's leading the pack as a fella screen. Go Sandy, get busy. Go Sandy, go get busy. It's so easy to make him fall for me, Heather. No man can resist salt and pepper because we're perfect from head to toe. It's not speculation. Your man said so. Revenge is sweet, but payback's a trip. Girlfriend, you won't know which is which. But I'll take. I'll tell you this. Don't try to answer this jam, because if you do, then I'll take your, and I'll take your, and we'll take your. There's the last line is there. This will say, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say, rhyme it, rhyme it. I keep for the youngest. I don't know that. <laughs> I was fighting myself at the right. Abdul G said on Mixer, I'm bobbing my head. See, you remember that song. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I'm, but I'm going to start it, though. Mm. Oh, also, I have to check it out. But knowing their history, those who know me know I love history. Mm. Knowing their history, I doubt they even wrote it. Mm. I think they manager producer Herbie Azar wrote it, but I could be wrong. Oh, okay. The same one who discovered them. Mm-hmm. Trying to see where I can get started. What the 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 heart of the matter that I really want to get at, and I'm going to use this song to do it, is that it seems to me that women in general have this unwritten dislike, hatred 
and negative con con competition against each other. Would you agree with that? Yeah. No, I think they have this negative, <laughs> yeah. negative co competition against each other. I'm going to tell you why. I'll give you an example. It's quiet. It's a quiet thing. It's not spoken. It's a lot of uh, hidden innuendos that's being sent, you know, yeah. vibes. But go ahead. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Hmm. And every imam, i going to say every, uh, probably a lot of imams mm -hmm. probably can uh, bear witness to the reality of this. Has a sister ever called you, inbox you, text, whatever, however she communicated with you and expressed a desire to learn something about the dean or to get in some classes or for you to teach her, right? As an imam, as a male, as a man. When you turn around and say, okay, alhamdulillah, we have a sister at the class, at the masjid. We have a sister at the masjid who could teach. Or my wife can teach you. Or sister such and such can teach you. Almost immediately, the sister will back up. Oh, mm -hmm. well, now nah, I much prefer. I don't really mess with sisters too much. Mm -hmm. And I find out a pattern. And it's not a new one. Like, if I teach a class for the sisters... At a masjid, the sisters will come out, and I've said it many times, even on this platform. My experience teaches me that uh, I don't know why. Maybe we can look at that at some other point in time. But I feel like the sisters, in my experience, the sisters uh, make much better and disciplined students. Mm -hmm. But you take them same sisters and say, "Here's a class," but instead of the brother teaching it. We're going to have a sister teach it. It's going to be problems. They're either not going to come or they some sometimes sisters don't feel like they can benefit from sisters. It always has to be a competition. Mm. Mm. And in the context of the article that I wrote, I, I restricted the discussion to pol polygyny mm. because a lot of times when a woman, a second, third, or fourth wife comes into the marriage, she comes in with the mentality that's expressed in these words. She doesn't have a care or a love for the brother. Mm -hmm. Her objective is to take down the sister who's already there. Do you agree? Yes, that's uh, not all the time, as we stated. We're not talking about everybody that comes in as a second, third, or fourth. But that is, is usually the case in some instances. Mm -hmm. Brothers, watch out. Because you have to look out for this mentality. You may be just in a, a porn in this game of woman versus woman. Brothers even know, brothers with experience even know mm -hmm. that in the eyes of women, they look more attractive and more desirable if they already have a woman. Hmm. I'm serious. Hmm. In the Jahaliya, we notice in the days of ignorance before Islam, we notice that if we were walking down the street by ourselves, we may or may not attract the attention of a female. But if we're walking with our girlfriend or wife or whatever your situation is, mm -hmm. we turn more heads of women, make more eye contact, more there's more flirtation going on, as opposed to when the man is by himself or with some other men. Mm -hmm. A lot of men or boys know this. They, they know that for some reason they never thought about it, why is the case, but they know that they look more attractive to females when they already have a female. And even some Muslim brothers know this. Why did, why do they know it? Because some Muslim, uh, some Muslim brothers, they've, they know, and they've even stated, uh, verbally, like for example, they could have a wife, right? Mm-hmm. 
and the marriage is not working out for whatever reason, whether it's justified or not justified. Mm -hmm. And the brother has in his mind that he wants to divorce his wife. Mm -hmm. But if he knows what I just finished explaining, he will put off divorcing that wife until he gets another wife. Hmm. He already knows he's going to divorce the wife. Right. But he's going to keep her around until he gets another wife. Now, why would he do that? Because he knows that if he doesn't have a wife, it will be more difficult for him to find a wife. Hmm. <laughs> he knows that in the eyes of you, sister, you, sister, <laughs> he knows hmm. that he stands a better chance getting married if he's already married. So he he already know the psychology of women. Yeah, he knows the psychology. He may not know why it's like this, but he knows that's the psychology. Hmm. And I've even examined on, on, on social media, like, you know, the Captain Saver brother, Saver sister. You know, I'm trying to not to say the, <laughs> the other word. You know. Right. Inshallah, none of our sisters are hoes. What you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> at me? <laughs> Yeah, inshallah, none of our sisters are old. But the brother looks extremely thirsty. The single brother. Mm -hmm. And you know the brother's single. You don't even have to ask him. He's in all the polygyny groups. He's in all the groups where, the Muslim, where there's a lot of Muslim women there. And it don't matter what is being said or what the discussion is. Mm -hmm. It be that brother that will always be, that's right, sister. I agree with you, sister. Us brothers need to get it together. <laughs> Right? And, and you brothers need to calm down. You brothers need to respect these sisters. You know, we got we need to love our sisters, right? <laughs> he have his cape on, he be caping hard. And it, it don't matter the sister could be dead wrong. The sister could be just, just making up stuff. But the sister got a point though. May so what she didn't say it right. You need to understand and respect where the sister's coming from. Right? <laughs> brothers, no matter no, no matter what is being said, how it's being said, no matter how much it contradicts or or goes up, uh, coincides with the Quran and the Sunnah, he's on the sister's side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the sisters be playing with him because they know he looks so and silly. But the sisters be playing mm -hmm. with him. That's right. Alhamdulillah, at least we got one brother that recognizes <laughs> the truth, right? And, and all that caper, the brother be single six months later, still capering, right? <laughs> all, all, all that caper, he still ain't getting married. <laughs> Ooh, but once he say, I'm getting married... Look, nobody's in the inbox, right? Yeah. Right? But once he put that announcement out there, yeah, oh, lie. his inbox get flooded, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I finally met someone. Alhamdulillah, brothers, mashallah, keep me in your dua. You know, nine no long years being single. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> I finally found my soul, mate. Alhamdulillah, we're going to get married on second such day. The hair come all the long eyelashes and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like your brother. I just want to say congratulations and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the eye, the evil eye, right? Yeah, that she won't the evil eye, but you know, may Allah protect you from the evil, the evil eye, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Why wasn't you in the brother's inbox before he said he was going to get married? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? And not that uh, we're encouraging, let me put the correct you know disclaimer to put a disclaimer we're not saying to be in sisters inboxes or vice versa we're not encouraging that <laughs> we're just saying why wait till he have a boo to get your <laughs> to get you know get your talk on now you feel acting like you interested in him but it's obvious that it wasn't him that you're interested in is the fact that he is pursuing someone else and you want to see if you can divert his attention away. I owe the bill. That's nothing but the shaitan. Because again, the target is the man is just a pawn. Mm -hmm. See, I'm helping you make see? the title make see? sense. See? The man is just a pawn in the scenario. Right. It's a the game real of... target of that woman is the other woman. Right. She wants to tear down that other sister. Right. And a lot of sisters think this is cute. It's just ladylike and all that. It goes against the dean. It goes against the foundation of the dean. Right. That's not. How can you have that type of mentality, that 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 type of mindset, and at the same time, fall in compliance with what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, "La yuqminu ahadakum hatta yuhiba liakhi ma yuhibu li nafsihi." None of you believes to he loves for his brother, what he loves for himself. Right. That's a basic foundation, fundamental usuli hadith in the deen. Right. You cannot have 
complete faith. In other mm -hmm. words, your faith is not complete unless you have this. Right. Something is wrong with your Iman mm -hmm. if you don't have this. Right. You're not a perfect, full believer without this. Right. But yet many of us are like, you know, yeah, that's me, so what? You know? But the funny thing now, as Muslims, we do not believe in karma, right? Right. We don't believe in karma. What, you know, what goes around comes. No, we don't believe in that. I mean, well, but I don't believe in karma because karma is connected with a religious tradition. Right. A lot of people think, a lot of people use the word karma, basically saying what comes around goes around. No, karma is deeper than that. Mm -hmm. It's connected with a dean. It's, it's sure. Right. Not so that. don't try to sound cute like karma. No. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about we believe in the Qadda of Allah. Right. Whatever he wills to happen will happen. Now, how about she went after this dude like that mm -hmm. and then somebody do that to her. Now, he, now she with the dude and then here goes somebody else coming to pursue her man. She'll have a fit. Like, what you doing? Like, like she wasn't the one that did that in the first place. It don't feel good then. I seen that happen. <laughs> it don't I, feel good. I seen sisters <laughs> before they was married to the brother bringing them plates of food to his job. You know, just all types of doing the wifely duties. You're it ain't even, even a married. wife. You're not ain't even, even married. married. And that brother was married to somebody else. She did not care how that wife felt or what, oh, whatever. Right. She just bringing plates of food, having long... I wish somebody would have fix you a plate. Long... <laughs> As long as the food is halal, right? No, ain't no... No, we put our bad. I'll fix you no plate. <laughs> you know, having these long, you know... Conver extended late night conversations, whether it be mm. by text or any other means, Surprise right? Alarm. You know, with the brother, they get married. I've mm -hmm. seen it. Mm -hmm. They get married to the brother, mm -hmm. and now that same brother mm. is getting food and dinner plates brought to his job by the next sister, and having long conversations for late, late night <laughs> with somebody else. And that sister will snap. Why are you doing this to me? How you going to hurt me? How you going to disrespect me like this? I'm your wife, right? And I'm looking like, subhanAllah, y'all y'all got some short memory. I remember you doing the same thing. Why are you upset? Mm hmm Subhanallah, they don't, don't like how it feels. SubhanAllah. Aisha, already Allah who broke that plate. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. And some brothers, again, because I, I want to reread one of the lines in the song. And I know a lot of you got short attention spans. This, this this show ain't about the song. No, it's not about the song. It's about what the song represents. What is? I know a part. Let me read the part because you already read. Uh, I'll take your man. That's right, but just for spite. Uh huh. Because you tried to diss me when I was on the mic, but I really don't want him. The guy ain't fly. Shoot. He can't even buy a fila suit. Uh-huh. So she's dissing the dude. Right. He, but the whole story <laughs> is, I'm going to take your man. Right. I'm taking him not because I want him. I'm taking him because I hate you. Yeah, I know he broke. I know he stink. I know he ain't no good. But because he with you, I'm going to take him. Yeah. And show and prove that I can take him from you. There ain't nothing you can do about it either. Yeah. <laughs> And the, dude think, so and, the th and the dude think he the man. Like, yeah. you know, I got all these women, you know, coming hollering at me and all that. You know, you, you're just a porn in this whole in this whole operation. <laughs> That's so sick stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and brothers got to watch out for this. Your brothers, mm. you ever talk to a sister and think about marrying her? You already got a wife. And this new sister is overly concerned about what's going on with, your, with the wife you already got already? Mm. Not just the obvious question, do your wife know you're about to get married? That's obvious, right? Mm -hmm. You know, well, what's her maintenance look like? Where she live at? Whatever. Or she'll find her on social media and friend request her <laughs> and, and just get all up in her space. Like, hold up, sister. Like, you know, hold up. You're supposed to be marrying me, <laughs> not her. You're supposed to be marrying me. Why are you worrying about her? I'm, I'm over here. I'm right over here. <laughs> You know, that's these sisters, right? <laughs> Again, that's a sign for you. Mm -hmm. If you have some level of ferasa, mm -hmm. you're not the focus. She's the focus. Right. She has that mentality. She wants to tear down her sister. She may not even know the sister. Mm -hmm. She may not, be, but it's just the mentality. It's something that's been, you know, that's uh, it 
comes along with this society in the same way that, you know, it's expected that children are going to rebel against and disrespect their parents mm -hmm. in this society. That's not normal. No, we think not. it's normal because we're from here. That's not normal. Yeah, it happens a lot that it seems like it's normal, but it's not normal. Yeah. Okay. You, you know what it, uh, I didn't mean to cut you, but you know what it reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Remind me of a cougar. We know what cougars are, right? Yeah. They hunt, but I'm talking about the human ones. We're talking about the older women. Uh -huh. You have a lot of older women now going after these young bucks right now. And they feel like, Oh, let me uh let me see if I can get him. And it's the other way around too. You got the young bucks trying to get the old old woman. Because yeah, I remember in my job, Smell Leah, it was like a badge of honor if you had like an older girl. Mm -hmm. Like if you were sixteen and your girl was like thirty mm -hmm. or something like that, like you know you had game. <laughs> so, <laughs> like it's a competition. Like let me see if I can get them. Yeah. But you getting with that person i'm talking about these days and time as an older person with the young buck it's no real relationship i'm not saying that it can't happen alhamdulillah for sugar mama <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying it can't work but the mentality that young dude is still you know he still got milk behind his ears it's a lot that he's learning and he's using him and she's like his mother but yet they're doing things that mother and sons don't do. And then he take that knowledge that he didn't acquire from being with this woman, taking her money because they like to spend money too. They like to get them these, these yeah. things to keep them around, but it's really not keeping him around It's just keeping him around enough just so he can get these lessons so that he could take it to the girl that he want to be with for real. Yeah. You know? So it's like a game. It's, you know, it's a game to be that's being played here. It's, it's a power. I'm glad talk, I'm not single. May talk, I law to make me not single. I mean, I mean, we say it, you know, together forever and ever and ever. I mean, ever. I mean, I mean. I mean, good. <laughs> said, hold up. Stella got her groove back. Wait. Uh, LOL. Wait, but Khadija was older, right? No, we're yeah. not saying it's blameworthy or how that. We just talk about this, this, this uh sick mentality that be going on right we're talking about these young these older women that's like 40 going off after these 15 year olds you know young bucks you got a lot of they they going every they take cougaring to a whole nother yeah, level there was a me. there was a video i just seen there was like somebody i think he was like 12 ish and we don't know it was a video mm -hmm. we don't know how old he was he was like 11 12 and and the lady was in the car somebody uh uh, post a link if you know the video I'm talking about. It just it's still circulating right now. Uh, the little kid with like a little backpack on, walking, mm -hmm. you know, crossing guard, the whole thing. And the chick pulled over the car like, um, how, how do you look good? Like mm -hmm. you can get it. What? Yeah. It's a pound line. We're not even talking about sixteen or nothing like that. No, we talk about like preteen, maybe even younger. So line. Messing. Well, like the keep messing people up that remind me of the movie antoine fisher yeah remember his babysitter was messing with him when that uh, mean lady was yeah. uh um leaving him in the house with her and he yeah. she had him in the basement messing that poor th boy up yeah. yeah he actually was getting raped but our yeah. sick mentality i know yeah. like us growing up like if we if antoine fisher the movie would have came out when we was younger growing up we didn't be like shoot i mean shoot i would have had that babysitter <laughs> 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 Y'all just, <laughs> just, nah, that messed him up. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just a sick mentality that we have that we can't even, you know, go about things the right way with the right intentions. Like, Lee, like, why are you worrying about that sister? Like, are you really trying to get with the sister? You know oh, what I'm saying? All right, Hand. <laughs> uh, one request, please. Her name is Hen, not, ah! <laughs> um, you know, uh, what was I saying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, she know what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, like, the mentality is messed up. Mm. That, you know, the way we go about things, like, you worry about her, you know, you probably get with the husband, if that's who you really want, you know, why are you worrying about this sister? Like, are you trying to get with the sister? Are you down low like that? Because we live in those days some and times now. You some, know? Some of them are. Subhanallah. In the, allegedly in the dean. In, in the dean. I'm not talking about somebody who used to be like that way and they made time for they practicing that day. I'm not talking about that. Some of them, like, they are like that actively. In the dean. Yeah. Subhanallah. See, we live and, in and, some And they time. seek polygynous situations out so they can 
further their objective. The brother is just a stepping stone to get at who they really want to get at. Subhanallah. And there may be some brothers that don't even have a clue. Yeah, some some, some 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 brothers be like, oh well, you know, hey, they just long, long, long as I'm in the middle, well, I'm cool. Subhanallah. <laughs> that was some brother, yeah. But they don't understand. Subhanallah. Transgression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repercussions. You think you're just gonna have fun in this life and cross all boundaries and it's not gonna come back to you mm -hmm. in this life as well as the next? Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. We forget about that part. Yeah. We get a lot watching. SubhanAllah. Well, we need to stop. And I say we. I'm just saying as a collective. We need to stop, you know, doing things like that. And clamp down and do what's right. And stop doing some crazy, unadulterated, you know, moves. You know, like there's no... There's, it's like all the lines are being blurred now about what you can do and who you can do with. And how you could do it and all that stuff when the law and his messenger slay what Solomon has already Solomon. laid down how things are supposed to be. As long as we follow that, we cool. But we always try to do our way or we, you know, listen to our lower desires and we follow them. And right. it's like we justify it. You know what I'm saying? And we got to stop justifying. Do what's right. You may be the only one that's trying to do right. That's okay. You know, you ain't got to follow with the crowd. It's a panel exactly. along. Because that's what it's about. You don't want to feel left out. You know? And, you know, adults feel prayer pressure just like children. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think prayer pressure is like, hey, dude, you want to get an eye? You know, you know that, that's prayer pressure don't even have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Prayer pressure can mean everybody doing something. You're the only one not doing right. something. Ain't nobody saying nothing to you, but you feel that pressure. It's a power. And so, you know, and and we feel prayer pressure in the dean. Mm -hmm. If you read a whole bunch of people and they all doing something haram, and you know it's haram, there's very few people that can say, we shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. We need to fail off. Right. Especially like on mm -hmm. social media, because social media made it where just everybody, I look at social media like a royal, like a royal rumble. Mm -hmm. Remember the wrestling? They used to have Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. like a thousand cats in the ring fighting. Right. Imagine just everybody just jump on one dude, and he at the bottom of the pile, and there's just more people just jumping on. It's a power. Like I've seen statuses where a sister will clearly say something wrong, and one person will have enough dean in them to say, "Well, sister, you, you know that's not proper that you say that. You know, this is more correct." then the sister herself may or may not say something. They usually say, well, if you don't like it, block me, unfriend me, leave mm -hmm. me, get out of here with that stuff. Then right. everybody else would just pile on. Oh, hey, go to Haram police. <laughs> and hey, go this. Take that stuff someplace else. And then everybody just pile on and just enjoying the wrong, like a bunch of munafiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hypocrites in Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, mm -hmm. as al-munafiqeen wa, mu munafiqeen wa munafiqat. Uh, mm -hmm. that he said that the hypocrites, male and female, they, they're friends and protectors of each other. They enjoin the wrong and they forbid the right. Surah Tawbah, the Munafiqeen. Mm -hmm. The hypocrites, one of their characteristics is that they support, they champion, they put their weight behind, they encourage what is wrong. And they call away from they prohibit and they stop people from doing what's permissible mm. what is good right and you can see this every, just just log on your social media mm -hmm. you find somebody openly saying something that's wrong un-islamic and claim to be a muslim and then everybody was like yeah and like a clear example i give of this is a sister who uh posts a picture of herself and she's not covered properly, whether she takes her hijab completely off or it's tight or something. And everybody will be like, you know, pressing like and, you know, mashallah, sister, you look beautiful. Other sisters will encourage her and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Then the one, the one person that says, sister, it's not proper that you show your aura like that. Everybody will jump on that one person who, who tried to enjoy the right and forbid the wrong. Mm -hmm. That's a sign that all those people in that are, are munafikin. That, that that's one characteristics of a characteristic of a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. If sisters want want to comment on the sister's beauty, 
Maybe they should go in our inbox. Sister, you look beautiful. But the brothers don't need to see that. Mm-hmm. Right. Men have to get, got to recognize the signs with any woman, including the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with anybody he's with. And vice versa. She posted another comment, too. And, like, brothers, you know, they be doing, uh, it be, it be, they be caping. Before you read that, they be caping. Because the sister, be, the brother be trying to pretend like they all pious and joining the right and forbid the wrong. <laughs> but the sister will post herself exposed and be like, Allah, sister, you are extremely beautiful. I would love to have you for, as my wife. But, you know, you shouldn't be covering like that. Really uncover like that. But they put it, they try to be so smooth and debonair. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it's like the yin and the yang. It's like, you know, uh, okay, I'm low-key putting my bid in, letting you know I recognize how good you look. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm Captain Sunnah. I'm in, joining the right for bidding the wrong <laughs> about you, the way you dress. <laughs> Man, people see through that courty stuff. I'll be courty. <laughs> Women need to just accept it, slam. We don't need to compete. The man has to treat us all as his wives. Every marriage is different, yes, but one can't be more superior and take the man that take the man. That's crazy to even think that way. What are you using to take him? It ain't Dean. Subhanallah. Exactly. Yep. Subhanallah. Men have to have got to recognize the signs with any woman, including the first. Yep. Subhanallah. Exactly. Ooh. Give you give you a hint, brothers. One 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 of the signs is in what uh, Sister Hind is talking about is that you know you married a sister and it was all cool before you got married but but as soon as you get married and some sisters are a little bit more subtle than others but they'll have a whole list compiled of all the sins that the other wife has been doing right mm -hmm. see you know your wife she you know uh, i saw her earlobe last week and you know in juma like she wasn't wearing her hijab properly and I don't know. I, I don't know how long she... I don't think she prayed that prayer. And she did this and she did that. You would think she had it written down somewhere like a bucket list of all the sins that the other wife... She's trying, in, in your eyes, she's trying to uh, diminish your other wife in your eyes. And some women are a little bit smoother than the others. Some women are just like, your other wife is evil. <laughs> I don't even, Frankly, I don't even know why you're still with her. Why are you still with her? You got me now. Mm -hmm. But some sisters are a little bit more subtle. They may run the game. Uh, Habibi. It took me a long time, but I felt like, you know, it's my God-given duty to tell you. I don't, it hurts me to have to tell you this. I don't want to tell you because I love my sister. But your wife, your other wife, such and such and so and so. Okay, I didn't want to tell you, but I just feel that just so you know, or so you could correct it. And then she might be like, and that's all I'm going to say. I got some other stuff, but I'm, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to put brothers up on game, that's all. I'm just trying to let you know, because that's what it is, game. It ain't Dean. It ain't Dean, because you could have corrected it yourself. Why are you telling the husband? And again, a, a sister that does that, she's setting her own self up for failure because, as we know, the Shehu mentioned it in his book, uh, uh, it's in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, is a well-known prophetic saying, saying, whoever exposes the faults of his brother Allah will expose his faults, even if he be expose him in his faults, even if he be in the recesses of his home. So what does that mean translated in modern day parlance? If you as a Muslim expose the faults of your fellow Muslim as a payback, Allah is going to take one or some of your faults and expose you in front of everybody. So a lot of times brothers and sisters think they're cute by exposing their Muslim brother and sister to somebody else. And then Allah takes that and exposes one of your sins to everybody else. So one of the best ways that you can keep your sins under cover, under wraps, is to keep your Muslim brother's sins or faults mm -hmm. under cover and under wraps. <coughs> and this goes obviously for a husband and a wife or co-wife is extremely important 
And see, we don't look at these things when we're talking about marriage because in our mind, I think it's because of our, our training and the way we were brought up here. We don't look, these are things that are well known in Islam, but we think all these things are on pause inside the marriage. Like a brother or a husband or wife treating their wife the way um, they're supposed to treat a Muslim brother, Muslim sister, we think that's on pause in, in the marriage. Mm. Exposing each other's th sins, we think that's on pause inside the marriage. Like sisters think they can go on social media or to the imam or whatever and just expose all their husband's sins, mm. all their faults. I, mean, I had a sister come to me telling me, uh, you know, imam, my husband do such and such and so and so. Okay. Okay, uh, want me to talk to him? No, 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 don't talk to him. I'm like, well, why are you telling me? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I was just, I don't know what to do. And they don't, they don't ever have a concrete answer for why they're telling you and what they want you to do with this information. Mm -hmm. You're just supposed to hold it in your heart, which is not good because if you keep holding it in, you're going to look negatively about the brother. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, a while, a while ago, I used to keep those things. All right, yeah, whatever. And I start feeling guilty. I'm like, no, wh wh why are you telling me this? Hey, you, know, you know, I'm going to tell your husband so we can straighten this out. You keep complaining. I'm mm -hmm. telling him. And one particular time, uh, when I did tell her husband, the sister stopped coming to complain to me. Because, mm -hmm. okay, if the brother got these problems, then we need to deal with it. Right. It's a problem in your marriage. These are clearly sinful, these actions. Uh, telling me is not, you know, uh, changing the evil. Let's bring it to the brother, you know. And if that's the case, you need to take it to a law, take it to the rug, you know. Exactly. Make dua, you know, make plenty of vicar. And if it's something that's serious that you really need to talk to somebody about without them intervening, that's what you need to do. Right. Because when you go to a person and I'm telling you something, it's obvious and some people may say, no, that's not the case. They just want somebody to talk to. But in cases, you bringing them into the situation where they're going to have some kind of feeling or what have you, depending on what it is, because the issue is not being addressed. Right. And they're just told to just hold it in and stuff like that. If it's something that needs to be addressed, it needs to be addressed. And whatever happens, happens after that. You know what I'm saying? Unless you want the situation to stay like that, you know what I'm saying? Not talking about like a situation where, you know, you're getting beat, you know, you know, or what have you, you know, something serious, you know, those situations, you have to act fast and, you know, they something that, you're, okay, let's just marinate, just be patient, sister, and just stay home. And no, that's something that needs to be addressed. That person need to be stepped to right. because he should not be putting his hands on anybody. So, yeah. So when you give an advice or something, you want to get advice. You go to, to support someone to get advice. You have to expect that that person is going to um, reach out to the other person to see what's going on, so we can see what's you know what, where we at, what's going on. Is this what you say is true? Because it's always three sides to the story. You know, to the story. You know, your side, they side, and what the law knows. You know what I'm saying? So we shouldn't just like just you know just try to dump it on somebody, and we got a bad habit of it. And you know what else you have people do? They be dumping on everybody. Like mm. different people all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody know about the situation, but ain't nothing being done. They just want to dump. Oh, I just want to tell you this. Don't tell me if you're not trying to find any kind of rectification, you know, rectification of the situation. You know? SubhanAllah. So, it's 945. I got a... Uh... A question in the inbox and somebody asked they didn't want to call and they didn't want to they wanted to keep the identity secret okay you want to read it you want me to read it okay. no I'm not going to read it I'm just going to summarize it and okay. uh, answer it <laughs> sister I don't I don't mean to laugh at your question it just be brothers be running some game oh, okay. basically the sister says she's been married for a short period of time mm -hmm. her husband is incarcerated Every now and then, her ex-husband contacts her, and then she rem and, and then she reminds him, like, "Hey, brother, I'm married." Mm -hmm. And then he's like, "Your your marriage ain't valid mm -hmm. because you ain't consummated yet, 
and you can't be married to a slave. <laughs> Sister, tell her brother, you got to go better than that. Yeah. <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> Subhanallah. First of all, <laughs> uh, the, validity, the validity of a marriage is not dependent upon consummation. You don't have to consummate immediately after the nikah. I mean, if for, if for argument's sake, you got divorced before the consummation, you only pay a portion or half of the dowry, etc. It is some things that are different, but you are married. If, you know, the dowry was agreed upon and and uh, there's witnesses and and you agreed, Wali took place and all of the conditions of a nikah marriage are there, mm -hmm. then you then your marriage is valid. Right. And he shouldn't even be talking. And he says, you can't be married to a slave. Says who? Does this person know any <laughs> deen? <laughs> there were I mean, slaves during a time of yeah. preparatory. So. Y'all Muslims who are still slaves, you can't be married. Y'all can't be because you're a slave. Being married is how I am for you. Right? <laughs> to me, I don't know the situation. I know you can't put everything in a, in a comment, but it sounds like you just try to hit. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. Trying to legalize it. Yeah, brother's always that's trying to come back around, mm -hmm. and that and, and and excuse me for being a little vulgar, but that's what I call that caboose booty. You know, the train has a caboose. They don't really use them no more, but them old trains. You know, you had the engine in the front and the caboose in the back. Mm -hmm. That that train in the back they, that they used to serve food out of. They used to call it a caboose. Right. Now you know in the jahili and the negative, you know, in the, in the streets, people when like you have a whole bunch of dudes having sex with one girl, they say, we ran a train on her. Right. Mm -hmm. The train analogy. Right. The caboose mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. To me, like even in the Jahaliyyah, I ain't like that stuff. I'm not going behind no, no other dude, <laughs> no, like, with no other dude in, in the vicinity or none of that stuff. Right. But a lot of dudes in the street like, hey, you know, what's up, my turn. Yeah. You know, to me, that's disgusting, even right. as a Kaffir. Mm. But, a lot of dudes in their mind, I'm noticing it in the dean, that they be wanting a woman because somebody else has her. It's a power. And so, oh, I know that's his, that's his wife. I want her now. Right? Mm. They want to be the caboose. They think it's something, in, in their sick mind, they think it's honorable. Like, oh, he at work? Like, he like a detective. Like... Like he he's sitting on the house, like in the car with the seat over we all Looking the way at back. His moves he, uh, and don't know his schedule. Oh, oh, oh he oh, okay, he he's at work. Let me make sure he don't double back. All right. Hey babe, I'm coming in. Right. And, and and to a lot of dudes, that type of woman is attractive. Mm. The the woman I got him in. Right. And again, I just like we did with this subject. Mm-hmm. With I'll Take Your Man and all that kind of stuff. I could point to rap songs that glorify what I'm talking about right now. L O Cool J, Boys of Men, Hey Lover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at his lyrics, right. mm -hmm. his whole lyrics is about how he's he's fantasizing about somebody else's girl. Yeah. And he's comparing himself to him. Mm -hmm. And what he can do. Yeah. And all that, what he ain't doing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a mentality. There's a psychology behind it. And it has crept into Islam. Subhanallah. I wouldn't be talking about these things if it's not affecting the Muslim. What about that other song? Lifetime. Erica Badu. Maybe next lifetime. She talks about she's got her, you know, her husband at home. And he got his thing, but... In another lifetime, in another time, we might be together. Like she's fantasized about them being together in another life. Like hmm. maybe, you know? maybe I missed. I, I, I didn't. I didn't interpret those lyrics like that. Yeah, like it'd be another time. Like maybe, maybe because I saw the video. Mm -hmm. So basically, the video and the lyrics is like he's selling drugs, but he wants, but he's smart. He don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why I read. It. I don't mm -hmm. know. But uh. Maybe that, yeah. What's the difference between polygamy, polygamy and polygyny? Polygamy is a general term, and it, and it applies to all types of plural marriage. Mm -hmm. Polygamy encompasses polyandry, which is a woman being married to more than one man. It encompasses uh, polygyny, 
which is a man having more than one woman. And it also uh, encompasses group marriage, where you have groups of people, they all marry to each other. Mm -hmm. Like swinging. Yeah. But, but, but swingers, they are, uh, swingers, you know, they just like swapping. You have group marriages where, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we don't see a lot of it around, but it exists. Subhanallah. Where groups of people, male and female, groups of men and women, they all in one marriage. Subhanallah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> uh, uh, Duma Jeep said the song Secret Lovers. He went way back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I think Lifetime was just her wanting to be with that man when she was doing something other than selling drugs. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I didn't, I didn't read it that way. Well, that's you could take it that way, though. If you just listen to it. I didn't see the the, the video. Yeah. <coughs> so, that that's my... No, y'all probably right. I didn't see the video, so... My so, question. that's my uh, answer to the sister who asked the question. I didn't read her question. I just summarized it. Mm -hmm. That, that that was her situation. Uh, I, I was trying. Need to, a, them brothers need to stay out the inbox. If the sister is married, leave her alone. She is not for you. And she didn't say if they had. When I say they, her and the ex husband have kids, mm -hmm. children together. Because if they have children together, there has to be some communication. Right. But if there's no children together, there's no need to be communicating. Right. And a lot of times. But he shouldn't be com communicating about that. You understand? Let me finish my point. You're right. You shouldn't yeah. be communicating about that. But some slimy brothers, mm -hmm. they will use that permissible communication mm -hmm. to put in a bid for the right. other stuff. True. Mm -hmm. So my point is, I, she didn't in her in her question. She didn't mention whether there's any children involved. So that might be his excuse for communication. Well, if there's no children involved, there's no need to communicate. Right. I mean, any which way, he's being just straight up disrespectful. Right. Well, you know, and but. You know, I was a, for me, like, if a woman don't give me no airplay, I'm not going to be stressing her. But we lived during a time period, time period where dudes beg women to be with them. So you tell a woman, a, a woman can tell you, no, I don't like you. I hate you. You're disgusting. You stink. Just the thought of you makes my skin crawl. Come on, boo. Come on. Right? <laughs> so that, that ain't going to stop him. You can say the most hurtful things to him, and it just... He still want to go out. Yeah, him. she shot me down. Shot you down? She just, like, crushed your manhood, destroyed any semblance of dignity that you can have? Nah, see, see, nah, nah, nah. I can see she still want me. She just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous. Be dangerous. Yeah. So these are, type, <laughs> these are the type of people that we got out. And right. sad to say, a lot of them is Muslim. But I will say, there's ways, a lot of times, you know, a, a lot of sisters, they be leaving that door open. Hmm. And so you blaming the sisters? No, I'm not blaming the sisters. I'm not, I'm not definitely not blaming her because I don't know the situation. Hmm. But a lot of sisters leave the door open. Hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they leave the how door they, open. How they leave the door open? A lot of ways. The softness in their speech. Mm -hmm. Allah speaks about that in Surah Azab, Surah 33. They, you know, it's just all extra con types of conversation. How you doing, mashallah? Just a type of extra talking for nothing, mm -hmm. right? And it's all sweet. And I've even seen it, mm -hmm. like, and I don't know if all of them do it consciously or whatever, consciously or unconsciously. But some sisters, and they'll do it in front of their husband, and like maybe because of fami familiar familiarity mm -hmm. is already set in. But they'll be talking to their husbands, uh, yeah, uh -huh, mashallah. Then another brother, maybe somebody she's not even thinking about like that. Right. Like, you know, alhamdulillah, mashallah. And I'm like, wait a minute. Your husband is, alhamdulillah, mashallah. But the other brother, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Like, wait a minute. You got it mixed up. The alhamdulillah, mashallah, supposed to be for your husband. <laughs> the alhamdulillah, mashallah, supposed to be for the other brother. <laughs> Get it mixed up. And I, and again, I don't think every woman that does this is trying to flirt with the other mm -hmm. man. Because mm -hmm. look how women are trained in this society. Mm -hmm. You beautify yourself to go outside the home. Right. You look like a hot mess inside the home. You put on makeup or whatever you do to beautify yourself to go out. Right. The husband sees the worst of you. And, and a strange man sees the best of you. Mm -hmm. 
the husband sees the saggy breasts and and the stained tomato sauce stained t-shirt, the funky underarms, he smell your breath when you wake up, all that kind of stuff. The strange brother see the breast poked up <laughs> with the extra bra and all the extra gadgets, Inspector Gadget, Batman suit, y'all be putting up, <laughs> squeezing all that fat in there, you know, and ma making it look like you got the hourglass and the extra, you know, uh, the, 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 the underwear you brought on the infomercial <laughs> that make it look like you got the apple bottle. Everybody see that. But, you know, your husband see the others, all the other stuff. Mm. And so, uh, you know, a mess. and so this, but this is how we train. Mm -hmm. We don't take it for granted because this is normal in this society. Mm -hmm. You beautify yourself with a strange man and you just regular. Yeah. Even unregular, worse than regular. You know, maybe, you know, you don't take care of your hygiene as good because you're in the house. Right. You know, for, for, for your husband. Hmm. And so, and so I think, you know, it, it because we live here. That's normal, mm -hmm. as opposed to what's Islamic. We sh you know, so uh, uh, so that that's one of the ways that uh, sisters leave the door open. They beautify themselves for strange men. They 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 put a softness and a sweetness in their voices for strange men. Allah speaks against all of what I'm saying in the Quran, in the same surah, surah Hujurat. Hmm. They involved themselves in these extra conversations, unnecessary conversations. Some conversations are necessary. You at work, right. or you're in a class, you're asking a question, or you're going about your daily business. Obviously, some things are necessary. Right. A lot of women have unnecessary conversations with brothers, unnecessarily. Hmm. And Allah says, He may have a disease in his heart. Mm hmm. He may have a disease in his heart. So you have to harden up your voice. Right. You know, I, I don't like that type of dude. That dude, that old slimy type of dude that, you know, husband in jail. So, you know, your marriage ain't valid, you know. I don't like that. Yeah. He's the type of brother that need to get punched in his face. For real, for real. But most of us live our lives on social media in, dig in digital communication anyway. So do, do talk trash. You're on the other side of the planet. Right. <laughs> he ain't that's, even there. That's why I, I try, I especially try not to argue on social media because mm -hmm. it's going to make me extremely mad. I can't do anything about it. And so, you know, some dudes are real sarcastic and condescending. They talking trash and they trolling and they whatever. I'm not even going to go back and forth with you. Because I know I'm going to get upset that I'm going to your profile. Where he live at? <laughs> Australia. <laughs> and even if he went Pittsburgh. Oh, he live in Pittsburgh? Mm-hmm. Let's see if he, what match did he go to. Then now, now, now I'm wrong. Right. Because I'm thinking about doing something to another Muslim. <laughs> so I try not to even argue, argue. So that long. Mm. Well, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Want to thank everybody. Or oh, what she talking trash about the husband? That's a way for others to come in. Yep. Mhm. Mm yeah. yeah. My husband ain't no good. Just that and the other. And yeah. you just open it like that person in their head. Like, oh, okay, I gotta open. Not, Not the, the system. system. She talking yeah. about the husband. That's a way for talk to. But in general, yeah. okay. Yeah. And also, you have to understand. Uh. It's not really specifically uh, addressing her question, but on social media, you don't know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Even if it's really a human sister that's on that page, who's to, show, who's to say that she doesn't show her husband her page? Right. Or her brother, or her, or her cousin, or her nephew, or her grown son. Mm -hmm. So even though it may be a sister's page, it may not only be sisters that's looking at your page. True. Then you got brothers that be having these husband and, husband and wife page. It's brother Abdullah and Amatullah together. So you don't know who you talking to. Right. I don't agree with all that stuff. But anyway, that's just me. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining in.
this episode of Half Your Dean Show. Inshallah, we'll be back next week with another another topic. At what time are we going to do it? 8.45. 8.45. We'll be tuning in at 8.45 because of Salatu Margaret coming in around the time that we normally air. Um, I ask Allah to bless each and every one of you. Um, I ask Allah to um, take care of those things that you need do I for. If you're sick, may Allah make you well. If you're going through stuff, may Allah give you sakina. Mashallah, and may Allah just make your situation easy for you. Amen, amen, amen. Alhamdulillah. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify all of our hearts. Amen. And that we pray that Allah purify our hearts from this, uh, this ghadab al batal, this unjustified anger, this hasad, this uh, envy and jealousy that we have towards each other. Because it takes away from our iman. We're, with these negative character traits in our heart, we not only harm the, the Muslim community and the Muslim ummah, but first and foremost, we're causing more harm to our individual selves by having these uh, uh, blameworthy characteristics in our heart. Uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the embodiment mm. of the hadith. Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La yukminu ahadakum hata yuhibba li atihi. Ma yuhibbu li nafsihi. None of you believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And obviously this encompasses our sisters. We pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala create uh, a deep love amongst the sisters. And that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will bind their hearts and create a deep love between them where they help each other get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enter the Jannah, the paradise, without any reckoning or without any punishment. Amen, amen, amen. Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you all and may you keep us in your du'as and we'll keep you in ours inshallah. Amen. Amen. Amen.